So again, uh, good afternoon. I, I hope that um, you'll consider uh, joining me after Mass as we decipher, discuss, and um, go through uh, exciting things like what the future Mass times will look like uh, come July 1st for the merger. Our dear Pope wants to hear how our journey as Catholics are going, and so we want to get input that we can send to the Vatican on how uh, he's calling for this universal synod, so it's a two-year thing, and part of that is going to be a, an, a synod experience that we'll have. Um, we'll also talk about the new saint names uh, that we're looking at and, and trying to decipher and discern that. And then for me, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is just hearing what's on your heart, like, why do you come here? And, and what do you hope to see over the next three years or so, you know? Like, especially in areas of, like, the Mass and, like, the, the Eucharist and, like, how we can unite with our community, uh, especially the different parishes and, and areas of growth. So if any of those themes are of interest, I would ask you to inconvenience your afternoon to spend a couple minutes here afterwards uh, to be able to, to engage in this process of merger. So, as you, as you all know, obviously, uh, Super Bowl is tomorrow. It's the Bengals against the Rams. My heart's kind of torn between both because there's pit players on both sides. So, kind of like, I'm pretty good. I see a Pittsburgh connection and all that, right? Um, but, you know, it's also a great time for commercials. And uh, Corona didn't need an ad in the Super Bowl for their beer commercial. Do you know why? It already went viral. <laughs> We're in Corona time, you know? Yeah. You got that? It's... The frozen food section takes a little bit longer to get the rest of this. So that's why they're kind of over there, you know? Like, it's like everything goes out over here and then it slowly fades back into that section, which they all move in slow motion over there. Do you, know, you ever notice that, Rose? Like, they're just kind of, oh, yeah, yeah, you do, right? Yeah. You see them. A man is attending the Super Bowl when he notices an empty seat, thinking this to be strange because it's, you know, such an important game. The man asked the person sitting next to the empty seat if he knows who sits there. The guy replies, well, I bought two tickets, one for my wife and one for myself a while ago, but she passed. So the man asks, couldn't you have brought someone else? He says, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> Probably not a good Valentine's Day uh, joke. See, they're still over there delivering. Wait, what is they talking about? It's so funny. Like out here, everybody, and then it takes time over there. It's great. This is like an echo chamber going on in here. Um, no, not a good joke for this time of year. But anyway, I think that uh, what, I, what I've been invited to like maybe uh, just share with you guys or to talk about is uh, like what we said at the beginning. The, uh, they say that the, the Beatitudes is the best portrait picture of Jesus Christ. Like, there's so many beautiful pictures of Jesus, like that are paintings, um, uh, you know, like the Jesus I trust in you image, and there's so many beautiful paintings. There's the face of Jesus there, uh, and, and then uh, they made a good Samaritan, and then you see the face of Jesus there. So there's all these different, like, place, you know, artistic renditions of Jesus, right? But how does Jesus paint himself? That's what we get in the gospel today. If we really want to know what the face of Jesus looks like, we listen to the Beatitudes. Our church, uh, you know, in the catechism says it's the, uh, the semblance, it's the resemblance, it's the profile of, of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I used to love to go to Kennywood. Do you ever go to those mirror rooms? <laughs> and like sometimes you look like really fat, and then sometimes you look really skinny, and then sometimes you look like really distorted and all that stuff. Well, that's what happens in our world today is like we see all these different faces and we can then start to be like, ooh, I don't want to get new there. I don't know if this ever happens to you, but it definitely happens to me that like when you walk and you see somebody's face that's maybe a different color than me or just looks poor or looks just completely out of whack or something, like there's something wrong or like what is it? Sometimes you just want to ignore them or just keep driving or don't look that way, you know, like it happens to me so much when I sometimes see faces that look different than the faces that I like to look at, and it's easy to just be like, ugh, like, well, I don't know if I want to look over, look over there. I don't know if maybe that ever happened to you, but you, 
see sometimes the faces of the poor, the beggars, those who are out on the streets, and you're just like, ah, let's just pretend like they're not, like there's that place on 65 with that bridge down the street. I don't know where that is, but anyway, they're always sitting there, and I don't know about you, but I look at that, and I'm like, please turn green. Like, I don't want to have to look at them, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, And then, you know, uh, sometimes like around our high schools around here, especially here in Ambridge, um, you know, uh, probably 30% of our high school kids here don't get three squirrel meals a day for many reasons. And then I was just with the principal, we were talking about our after school program. And she's like, that's one of her number one concerns. It's like the kids don't have, they don't get enough food. And maybe you're like me, sometimes if you're ever pulling out of here, like a school getting out, you're like, would you get out of my way? Like I'm going somewhere. And you don't want to look at them, right? Like these faces of these poor, these kids who, 30% of them have not eaten a good breakfast or didn't have a good lunch. And they're hitting the streets. And we look at them, and at least for me, it's like, oh, they're causing traffic. You know, I have to go somewhere important right now, you know? And so we see these faces, and they can be a little distorted. They can maybe look at them, and we don't see more than just the fact that they're, you know, crossing or, oh, they're probably going to go do something right now, you know? Uh, Yeah. Or... You know, sometimes it's hard to see, uh, at least for me, because I have a hard time sometimes just understanding my own emotions. They sometimes get too disconnected, and so I'd like to go do things rather than feel things. And it's hard to, like, see the face of a husband whose wife has been three months in the hospital, and she's in a vegetative state. And so, like, if I see him at church, uh, sometimes I'm just like, this is going to be a hard discussion. Or I don't know if you have a friend or somebody who's divorced and you'd want to like, oh boy, I don't want to see that person. Or somebody who's an addict and all they do is talk about like the 12 steps and you're just like, "Uh, I don't want to see that person right now. And so there's these faces of people who are truly like weeping and and we can sometimes see them and just not want to engage in them. Or, you know, faces that... uh, sometimes can lead us to actual hatred, like, I don't know, the opposite of your political stance. <laughs> when you see that face, it's like, oh, rage, right? Or, or maybe it's uh, like when my grandparents came over from Ireland, or great-grandparents in the late 1800s, they were immigrants, and maybe some of yours who have come from Italy or from wherever, they were hated. Like the Irish, they were totally hated and their face just for showing up. Not because they did anything, they just showed up. And, and, you know, sometimes the face of the immigrant, you know, like our own ancestors, like Ambridge is built on the backs of (laughs) so many different countries that came here to find a home and a place to be able to raise their family. And and so, um, yeah, and and today, continually, the face of immigrants coming in sometimes can be like a face of, of hatred. So St. Paul, you know, Caravaggio, my, my main man, he's one of my favorite artists, he has, he has St. Paul on the horse, right? And he's galloping to go kill those Christians because he hates the face of Christians, right? And he's been killing them back and forth, and, you know, Stephen's one of the first martyrs, and he's like, great. And he's getting praise for that and all that, and then all of a sudden he's riding his horse, according to Caravaggio, obviously I don't know if he was on a horse, And boom, he gets knocked off the horse. And what does Jesus say to Paul? Why are you persecuting me? If we want to see the face of Jesus today, we need to see the face of Jesus in those who are poor, those who are hungry, those who are weeping, and those who are getting hated on. There's where the portrait of Jesus is. We don't need Michelangelo to come down or somebody to paint it. We can see it in the streets of Ambridge. We can see the streets... In our, when we're driving, we can see it in the mirror when we feel like that. We can see it in our homes. We can see it on TV. We can see it in our politics. Jesus' face is constantly out there as somebody who says, why are you persecuting me? And so today we have such a great opportunity to be able to see the face of Jesus. And, I, I, and I'm going to stop with this because I could stay all day on this thing. I'll, you know, obviously, it's a very, uh, but I, I, was, um, I was in Nebraska, that God-forsaken area of Nebraska, of the world, but great people. It's all flat, and it's really boring, but it's a great place to go because they have good steaks. 
At least they say so. But uh, so I was there, and, and I was watching this video uh, on our retreat, and it was called the Still Face Experiment. If you ever really want to see how a face can change in its adjustment, it's an experiment they did in Harvard. And they had these little babies, so like six months old, and they had like one-year-old and a two-year-old. And they told the moms in this experiment, they're in a room, video taping them, play with your child, you know? Like you can see this happening over there. It's really cool. I was thinking about this homily. I saw this little girl, she was pulling her mom's nose. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what kids should be doing, pulling their mom's nose and in their ears and, and all that. And mom's responding. And so kid likes that. That's good. Kid does something, mom responds. There's like this back and forth, right? But what happens when mom doesn't respond and kid gets still face? And so, yeah, they get angry. And in this experiment, the kid's in a like, little seat or whatever, so they're kind of strapped in, at least for the six-month-old. And so mom doesn't respond, and the baby's like doing all the normal things, pointing, trying to touch, yeah, you're laughing, and mom is still-faced, like doesn't respond. And then the baby all of a sudden like goes silent. And then the baby starts to yell. The baby starts to cry. The baby gets distorted and is like turning like this. You can see the anger in like the baby. And the mom is still faced. And there's these experiments that go over and over of like, what would have been like for a child to grow up sometimes without a mother to be able to nurture and love? That was the kind of the purpose of the experiment is to see that the way the, the healthy relationship between a mom and baby happens. But it's ingrained in us. Then when we have emotions and we want to express ourselves, we need to see that reflected and, and absorbed and, and like tenderized and received and like even if it hurts, welcomed in the face of another person. And so that's why it's so powerful to think that like this is the face of Jesus. What we hear in the gospel reflected in our community and, and sometimes when we look in the mirror and, and we, we can like ask ourselves like are we the still faced mom or are we that mom that's letting you know the little one whoever that could be pull our nose yank our ear could be a friend could be a high school kid could be a homeless person could be ourselves sometimes and and and, and so um So I, I think that's where we could go to Jesus today and really uh, ask him to, like, let me see your face. Like, take the veil down. Let me contemplate and really receive what it means to look at you. And perhaps it's in somebody who's suffering. Perhaps it's yourself, and you need to see him in that. Because there's that psalm, right? Like, want to see the face of God. That's like a window into eternity, into heaven. And that's why Jesus says, behold, your reward will be great in heaven. And isn't it funny, right? Well, not funny, but it's kind of ironic, right? Like Jesus is blessing things that the world tells us are a curse, like poverty, hunger, weeping, and being hated on. Things get flipped with Jesus. So when our faces perceive the face in others, that's our sign. That's what Christians do. They realize that the hardships and the curses of this world, if they're in Jesus, they can actually lead us to being able to experience heaven. Isn't that why we have a crucifix and a crucified Jesus whose face takes on all of this out of love for us?